technical detour, uh, welcome back. If not, then we're going to actually uh, crack this open and see what, what we just installed. So you're going to get to this page. Uh, this is the CIS. You'll notice you're at online.elmsln.local. The first thing you want to do is log in. So login is admin, admin, very secure. <laughs> so we're going to log in. And in my case, I got all this. Hey, do you want to save? Um, if we click on faculty, should see a uh, some sample contents been added to, to give you an idea of what's here. So this is you know just a goofy, uh, goofy little thing with me in it. Um, we'll also notice that there's when I go to my page, we can start to kind of feel around what the idea we're going for here is. Um, we've got the courses that I've authored, and we've got a highlight reel which is basically pointing to um, any videos that have been referenced in stuff that I'm a part of. Uh, so that we're trying to really highlight faculty in this system. Um, you can go to courses. We can see that there's a course that's being taught by the School of Singularity. And we can sort by academic units, programs as Elms LN, or we can sort by course number. Uh, the interface is still being cleaned up, obviously. We can go to program and see we've got one program that we're offering. It's Elms Learning Network under the School of Singularity, again. Um, and services is unstyled, but it's you know just to have some content there again, Elms LN. So to do anything useful, we're going to go into courses, and uh, we'll click details here. So you'll see we have a sample uh, course page laid out uh, as to how we would talk about courses. Basically, a marketing presence. Uh, everything's driving forward from this site. Uh, so this would be the site that you promote to. You know, faculty, students, staff, it's, it's supposed to be kind of a way of uh, organizing everyone together uh, in, under a unified flat, um, site that isn't just, you know, a, an open atrium space or, or some type of um, project management location. So you see we can get uh, basic info here, you know, sample syllabus, the fact that this is four credits and it was offered in March 2014, um, the school of singularity, you know, the school in question. Uh, you'll see this is this bright, bright blue here. Uh, what we can do um, is we can go into, if you notice at the top here, we've got CIS. Uh, we can go through this, and if we go to units, for example, uh, you'll see we have School of Singularity. We click that, and we can edit School of Singularity. So that color is not, it's being dynamically uh, set based on this relationship. So if we want to set that to blue, for example, we change that. Hit save, and now anywhere in the entire system uh, that that's referenced, it's going to be that blue color. And so you see, we got that blue color band there. If we go back to courses, singing 100 is now a dark blue. Uh, faculty, I'm a faculty member of School of Singularity, and you'll see now that everything is accented uh, as blue there as well. So you can create different departments basically, and kind of visually talk about the courses and brand them a little differently. Um, it's also picked up this tint throughout here, you'll see. Uh, sometimes it doesn't always make sense. Again, we're still working on that. Uh, so I've got some sample screenshots in here. You can see these pop open, a nice little light box. So students can get an idea of you know, some imagery related to the course. Um, a little bio of who the course author is. In this case, it's me. And we've got some topics covered and things. Again, we're still actively styling. Uh, there's a nice big splash area here for a uh, link to like a YouTube video. Um, and uh, you can see if we want to edit this, it's just, it's a node. So we can click edit, we can go through, it's a fairly, fairly large page of items, but you, know, you can edit the visuals of it and uh, the text areas and things. Uh, this is one of the real nice things about this system is uh, there's a lot of fields, but they're there to you know, give you an idea of what you can do. You can always add more fields. You can remove a lot of fields. Not, I'm not going to say you can remove every field in the system. That obviously wouldn't make sense. Um, but this is, at the end of the day, just a well-produced Drupal site. Uh, it's using features and best practices of distribution development. Uh, so you can, you know, if you know Drupal, you can really dig in and do that stuff. If you don't know Drupal, you can just play around with this and say, you know, wow, this is really neat. Um, so. If we want to actually produce a core space, right, this is marketing space. And while it's great that, you know, it's, it's responsive out of the box, um, showing this to someone, you know, isn't a deal break, a, a game changer, right? So what we want to do is actually produce a new space. And so we're going to go to 
Um, you can either click services and do it through there, but uh, we're going to go through the long form. Uh, so if we go to my account and we do set up a course, so we click under system setup, you can use this as one large form and basically um, pre-populate and request a course uh, through here. You know, we're going to select Sing 100 for the Singularity 100 course, and uh, we get some additional options here. So we can pick the tools that are, are built. Um, I'm going to recommend for now using Course Outline. It's the most robust. Uh, it's using the MOOC distribution to, to do this. Um, and then you've got a few options here as far as outlines to use. Um, if you want to get an idea of what's possible, um, we can do a unit-based outline. This is going to import a lot of content initially and give us a nice um, instructional strategy uh, to work off of. Uh, offering, when is this course running? So we're going to say it's spring 2013-14 because that's the time of this video. Uh, this information is not you know, critical, but we'll just put it in anyway. Just some. Uh, and two, three, a, blah, 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 right? Uh, you can upload a syllabus and a welcome letter, uh, but we're not going to do that right now. So we'll click create course after all that. And you'll see we've got this progress bar. So it's going to say, hey, waiting for server to start site request. Um, what's actually going on here? We'll kind of cross paths here with the, tech, the technical side and just it running. So we'll make this a small window. This is a, a terminal window to the server. Um, is if I go to Elms LN and we go into config slash jobs, what just happened when I filled out that form is it created a patterned file and you see, oh, it just, it, it recognized that there was a file there and it picked it up. Um, it, it checks for the files every minute. So it does take a little time sometimes. Uh, it takes approximately three minutes to process these files as well. That's just a generic value. Sometimes it takes two minutes. Sometimes it takes a little longer. Um, but you'll see it's taken that and it's made a sing 100 because that was the course in question and then dot the the name of the tool that I've requested um, and you'll see that it's processing it and that it, there's a progress file that I can you know read what the progress is so if I copy this and we we open this file up to look at what's in there um, it's basically taken this the options that I selected as I went down the form and it's uh, pre-selected them here so you'll see we've got things like uh, Sing 100, we've got VU as a grouping order. These are the, the front-facing address, the back-end address, uh, the name of it, uh, the title of this course, the uh, administrator account that requested it. Uh, it's of the MOOC distribution. And, and then we can just run generic rush commands against it. So this is how we prime and set up a fully functioning Drupal site uh, from that very simple form that was created. Uh, so these jobs get written to the server, the server notices them, and then it starts running through this, this uh, pattern file to produce a Drupal site at the end of the day. Uh, and you'll notice because we select a unit-based outline, it's got this path that it knows it wants to import for a unit-based structure. So we're going to uh, pause here and we'll pick this back up once it's done uh, building the site. When the job finishes, uh, it will automatically redirect you to the site that it just built, and you'll see here I'm pointing out a few things of what just happened. Uh, we've got a brand new Drupal site. Woohoo! So uh, you'll see it's at a different address. So we've got courses, which was the name of the tool that we selected. This is the course outlining tool. Uh, again, dot Elms LN local, because we're working offline. And then the name of the course in question, uh, which this is actually mapping to, it's a Drupal database at that point. Uh, so Sing 100, and you'll see it dumped us onto the welcome page. Um, because we requested that um, certain information be produced, you know, automatically, like the course outline, we've got a course outline over here. Uh, so this is an example outline, just has some fake content in it of units and lessons, um, but it produces it automatically, so you can get an idea of, you know, what you would put over here. Um, we have some lesson templates that come packaged out of the box. So let's say we want to edit one of these pages, um, we'll edit our introduction page. So we go to introduction, click edit, and you'll see we've got pretty simple form. Um, we can override the title as it relates to the left-hand menu versus the title on the page. Um, so we've got introduction as the name. Let's delete this material here. And if we want to throw down a template just to see what they look like, you can click this page button, which is templates. Uh, we're actively working on more of these. Uh, let's throw in a topic reading because that looks pretty clean. Uh, so this is just a well-made uh, bulleted list effectively and some divs. Uh, so 
Not a lot of smoke and mirrors going on here, but it does look very clean, especially as you add new ordered items in here. Uh, it's got some nice CSS transitions and things. It's got an optional versus required readings list, so you can see you know, just different colors to indicate that. Uh, it's using a textbook module, if you're familiar with it, uh, which is uh, using well-formed accessibility defaults to generate this page in the first place. So let's save that so we can see what our, our template looks like that we've laid down, because uh, it'll be a lot more attractive than just ipsum lorem, even though it's ipsum lorem <laughs> again. Uh, so there's our, our list that's put down here. Um, this is running the chamfer theme, which is um, a mobile responsive theme. You'll see even when we get down into uh, very small mode, drops out the navigation at the top. It actually stuffs it down here under this uh, collapse menu. So we can close that up. We can navigate the course um, just by tapping either left or right at this point. Uh, so very clean, um, nice little jump menu in here. We can get to any part of the interface that we could before uh, just through this little tiny navigator. So let's move this back up to full screen here. Um, some other things, uh, if you're not familiar with this system, we pop open the admin tab on the left. This is how uh, instructional designers and faculty generally work with the system. Uh, so we can have shortcut links over here. We don't use the, the admin menu, I use that. Um, uh, some things that we have uh, set up out of the box, you can modify the course settings. Um, so what's the default outline to use? It's the, the unit outline. Uh, the you know, the title of the course, the course name, um, where to go when people first get here. Um, so that's what takes them you know, to the welcome page, has these names here. Um, we can also modify the theme. Uh, so part of this setup is attempting to be completely theme independent. Um, so the other tools that we'll make in later videos, uh, you'll see actually use different themes for each one of them. This uses a different theme from CIS. Uh, this is also, you know, it's going to be unique per course then. So you can upload a banner or you could apply a whole new theme that you developed. Uh, so that it better relates to the content that you're building. Um, we've got search and replace capabilities, so you mess up a link or something or a word, you can search and find it through there. Uh, just a shortcut to performance, because sometimes we've had to you know, just basically get access to the clear cache button. Um, there's a typo reporting engine, which allows people to uh, effectively highlight part of the page. Let's say this is wrong. I can click this. Hey, this is wrong. Okay. Um, just for very quick um, content editing, you know, to clean up type of stuff. Uh, so I can go ahead and type of reports after that. And, you know, you could have one editor go through and basically generate the reports and another person come through and, you know, delete them as they resolve them. So it shows you a little bit of the context, um, what the comment they left is and where this happened. So very minor project management in that way. Um, we've also got instructional outlines. So we'll go to that. You'll see we've got the unit outline. Uh, so we can either copy this entire outline, like if we're offering this course next semester in a different version, we can do that. We can delete it, uh, or we can pop open the um, ever popular outline designer. And so this will not look like the book module as you know it if you're used to using the book module, I, I feel bad. Um, this is the outline designer that is an overlay on top of books so that you can rapidly build uh, content outlines and um, work with them. So you know, I could double click introduction and uh, this is the new title. So we can modify these things or save via Ajax. Um, we can you know, expand and collapse the structure as we see fit. Uh, we can make things you know, a little bigger if you really want to, or we can, we can delete certain items. Um, we can use a project called Hidden Nodes so that we can actually hide items uh, from uh, students. So maybe we're not done with lesson five, we could actually hide this and we'll propagate that status and hide the content. Um, so there's a lot of shortcuts. You can do a lot with you know, very little effort through here. We could override the title or we could duplicate entire branches of the content outline through this interface. Um, this really lets you uh, do some section management stuff as well. So when we're all set up, um, you know, we'll have a list of sections in here. And this is actually where I'm going to cut the video off and we're going to do another one um, just about section management and watching these web services talk to each other and really understand what's going on here.